Hi, this is our first lecture on Chapter 9, um, our tutorial, and we're going to be looking at analyzing a two-asset portfolio. Um, what I've got us started here with is I already have downloaded the adjusted closing data for Macy's and Johnson & Johnson between March 1st, 2002 and March 1st, 2013. Um, I then used that adjusting close data to calculate the annual returns, and I've brought the annual returns into this spreadsheet. So one thing that we know about investments, we can't really decide or say what you should invest in or what's going to be a good investment because you know, your guess is as good as mine. Um, but one thing that we do know for certain about investing is that we receive a lot of benefits from diversification. Um, our returns that we get are the average of the returns of the companies or the different assets that we invest in. But as we add assets to our portfolio, the risk actually decreases. So the risk or the standard deviation um, is not going to be the average of the standard deviation of the items in our portfolio. Instead, it's going to be less. So I'm going to use this tutorial to show you how to create a two asset portfolio and do some analysis. All right. So I'm going to start noting first that my newest date is on top. I'm sorry, my oldest date is on the top and the newest date is on the bottom. Up here I have my proportion of stock in Macy's and I've set it to be equal to 50%. So if my the amount of my money, if I have $1,000 and I invest 50% in Macy's, I'm going to invest the other 50% in Johnson & Johnson. But in order to make my spreadsheet work better and flow more smoothly, I'm going to say that my percentage in Johnson & Johnson is going to be 1 minus 50%. So that if I want to play around with these numbers and say, oh yeah, I'd like to invest 20% in Macy's, Johnson & Johnson updates automatically. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the return that we expect to get on our portfolio. And the return on our portfolio is simply the weighted average of the returns of our two stocks that are in it. So for instance, we have 50% of our assets in Macy's, so half of our money would have lost 31% in 2003. And I'm going to add that to what would have happened to this, the rest of our money. The other 50% of our money would have lost 9.5% in Johnson & Johnson. So we're going to have incurred a loss that year. I want to make sure that I have absolute references for both returns so that I don't have to enter it new at every time. Okay. In the next row, in 2004, half of my money would have been working hard, earning a 95% return in Macy's. while the other half of my money, represented by this 50% invested in Johnson & Johnson, would have still lost money again, losing 10% that, that year. So my overall return would have been 42%. So my loss in Johnson & Johnson was buffered by that really high return in Macy's. And the year before, when Macy's really tanked, our return was protected a little bit by this less, <laughs> less great of a loss in Johnson & Johnson. So I'm going to pull these down now that you understand how to do that. And I have my returns every year on my portfolio. So if half of my money was in Macy's in 2013 and half was in Johnson & Johnson, I would have received an average return. So the next thing I'm going to do is calculate my mean or average return. So what we would say is that on average over the last 10 years, Macy's returned 22.68%. We might then go on to call that the expected rate of return. We would say if Macy's performs in the future like it's performed in the past, we'd expect a 22.68% return. I can do that again for Johnson & Johnson, and I can calculate the average of their, their returns every year for the last 10 years, and they had a lower return, 6.24%. Our portfolio return is going to be equal to the average of the returns on into our entire portfolio, 14.46%, which incidentally is equal to the average of the two portfolio's returns. 
14.46. So nothing miraculous or spectacular happens to our returns when we put them in a portfolio. It just becomes a weighted average. Let's look at standard deviation. If you remember from before, we use our standard deviation P, S, T, D, E, V, P to do standard deviation. So the standard deviation is 58.73, which indicates quite a lot of variability. Instead of entering that calculation again in each cell, I'm just going to drag it over and then delete this one that doesn't matter. And we're going to see that the standard deviation of Johnson & Johnson is 17%, and the standard deviation of our portfolio is 33%. So a quick analysis here says that Macy's has a higher return and also a lot higher risk. Johnson & Johnson has lower return and lower risk, and that's what we would expect. We'd expect to see a relationship between the return that a stock yields and the risk of that return. Standard deviation isn't like mean in the fact that if we average our two returns from Macy's and Johnson & Johnson, we'll get the same return as our portfolio, but that doesn't apply for standard deviation. And that's because diversification reduces risk. The average of our portfolio, I'm sorry, the average of the two stocks standard deviation is actually greater than that of the portfolio. So by having a portfolio, our, root, our risk is actually reduced. We have less risk than we would have had had we not diversified. And that's because the stocks move somewhat together but not completely together. So they actually offset the changes in one another. So our portfolio is less variable than either stock held together. So the next thing we're going to do is our variance. VARP. The variance is the square, uh, is our standard deviation squared. But we're going to need it for the next calculation. So I'm going to enter it here. And then for covariance, we are going to use COVAR and then they want an array. An array formula means you have to highlight something. The covariance of the returns of those two stocks. Their covariance is 0 0.0375 and their correlation is 0.3658. So we see that we have a correlation that is positive but less than one, meaning that they move together but not in specific tandem or not in perfect tandem. The next thing that we're going to do that is a little bit trickier is we are going to utilize our data on returns to see how the portfolio variance, the portfolio standard deviation, and the portfolio mean return change as a function of the percentage that we have invested in Macy's. And that's going to be the topic of our next tutorial. Please email me or put a message on the discussion board if you have any questions.